Hello everyone, this is homework number four, molecule transport. Um, be sure that you are completing Cornell notes as you watch this video. Um, so your title can just go ahead and be molecule transport. Our essential question today is why and how do molecules move in and out of cells? So keep this in mind as you watch this video and be sure to reflect on this um, at the very end. So today in class, you learned about and discussed the cellular membranes or plasma membranes as we call them sometimes. And so here is an image of the cell membrane. And as you can see, it's pulled right out of the um, outside the lining of the cell. Um, so you learned today that the cell membrane is semi-permeable. So semi meaning that um, some, not all, okay, so semi, right, some, not all, um, and permeable, be, permeable, sorry, meaning can get through. So some things are allowed through the membrane and some are not. So um, as you remember today, you saw these um, phospholipid bilayer right here. And so some things can get through there, like water molecules, things like that, and other things can't. Um, so we're going to use protein channels to move things in and out of our cells. We'll talk about that later in the week. Um, so we know that the, the plasma membrane, the cell membrane, moves around the cell. It's not stationary. Um, it's constantly moving around, and things are going in and out of it. So this is a really important concept to keep in mind as we go through this video um, and talk about why and how things move through our membranes. So the first thing we need to discuss is why do molecules move in and out of cells? Like why are we even talking about this? Well, cells are alive, so they all need things. Just like, sorry for the handwriting, um, just like um, we are alive and we need things, um, cells are also alive as we've discussed and so they need things as well. So kind of think about what are some things that you as a living organism need. Okay, so we need food, we need water, we need rest, um, but things that we have in common with cells is that we need, like I said, food and water. So some examples are our food and our nutrients. Now, this isn't the only two things that cells need, obviously, um, but these are two big categories. So another word um, for food is nutrients. Sorry again for the handwriting. Um, but though that's a word you're going to hear a lot, and really nutrients just means food. Think of like the word nutritious. If you've heard of a nutritious meal, it's good for you. Um, it's good food. So um, nutrients are also just food. Um, so everything we're going to talk about today, um, the reason they're doing these things is because cells need things, and then they also kind of need to get rid of things. So think of us, we get rid of waste products. Cells are going to do the same thing. If there's an overload of a certain amount of um, nutrient or something like that, they're going to get rid of it. If there's a waste product, they're going to push it out of their cell. So we talk about this because cells are alive and they're um, active, and so they're doing these things all the time in every cell of your body. So how do molecules move in and out of a cell? Well, there's two things that kind of dictate or decide um, how molecules are going to move. And the very first one is called the concentration gradient. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, and the second reason or the second um, how molecules move um, is the type of solution the cell itself is in. So these two things kind of go hand in hand, um, but we're going to break them down a little bit because they're slightly different, um, but they go together. So the very first one, the concentration. Um, this is something we need to talk about to understand the word concentration gradient. So when we talk about a concentration, we're saying it's the amount of stuff, if you will, in a solution. Okay, so let's get a little bit more scientific. Stuff um, can be things like salt, sugar, oxygen, um, and the more sciencey word, if you will, for the stuff is called the solute. So a concentration is the amount of solute in a solution, and a solution is just like a liquid that the cell is sitting in. So for example today, let's look at this crystal light picture. Um, 
the concentration of crystallite, the amount of crystallite powder in this picture right here differs from cup to cup, right? So this cup right here has a low concentration of crystallite. It's just barely tinted a color. Um, it probably wouldn't taste very good, right? Because it doesn't have a lot of the powder in it. Um, and so that is a low concentration. However, if you look at this cup over here, it has a high concentration. Its color is darker, meaning it's going to have a lot more crystal light in it. And so if we compare these two, we say that this one right here has a higher concentration than the one boxed in red. Um, and then all of these little guys are kind of just in the middle um, in between the high and the low concentrations. So now that we know what the difference is, or what a concentration is, excuse me, we now can talk about a concentration gradient. So a very important word, um, so make sure this is in your notes. Um, this is the differences or the change in two concentrations. So before we go to this slide picture, let's look down here again at our um, crystal light like we talked about before. We said that this crystal light right here had a high concentration of crystal light. Um, it's darker, it's probably gonna taste better, uh, as opposed to this guy over here where he has a low concentration. So let me throw that in here. This is a high concentration and a low concentration. And in here, in the center, we kind of go um, in the middle. It's kind of a mix between the two. Okay, so as we look at this concentration gradient, let's go back up to this picture of the slide. So you're probably wondering why in the world is this here? Well, concentration gradient is very similar to a slide, okay? It's um, a high concentration up, oops, sorry. <laughs> There would be a high concentration of crystal light at the top of the slide, right? Because you're higher up. At the bottom of the slide, we're going to say we have a low concentration. Well, in a few days, we're going to talk about something called diffusion. Um, and I want you to keep this picture of a slide in mind when we talk about diffusion. Um, because molecules are going to go from a high concentration, where there's a lot of them, like this crystal light right here, Okay, to a low concentration. So they're going to go down the concentration gradient. They're going to go down the slide from high to low. Okay, so we'll talk about that more this week. But just kind of keep that picture in mind um, when you begin to hear your teacher talk about diffusion and the concentration gradient. So how does the concentration gradient affect cells? Why is it even important? Okay, um, this concentration gradient is going to determine which direction molecules move. So does it go in the cell? Does it go out of the cell? Um, and there's a couple different types of solutions that we need to talk about in order to understand this a little bit more. Um, and so if you look at this picture, you're going to see these molecules on the outside, the red, um, and the yellow circle, the big yellow circle, is the cell. Um, and then you're going to see molecules on the inside of the cell with the orangey um, circles. And so depending on um, what the concentration gradient is, so where there are more and less molecules, um, things are going to move. Water specifically is going to move into and out of the cell. So the first kind of solution we need to talk about um, that affects molecule movement or transport is called an isotonic solution. So isotonic in a solution like this, um, the solute or the stuff, the sugar, the salt, whatever it may be, is equal inside and out of the cell. So iso itself means equal, and so um, this should be kind of a relatively easy one to remember, okay? Um, molecules are going to move into and out of the cell equally if a solution is equal. So for isotonic, you can look over here in this picture. Um, there are an equal number of blue dots and an equal number of red dots inside and out of the cell. So water itself is going to move equally into and out of the cell. So why is this important? We'll look at um, our blood cell and our plant cell. So here's a blood cell right there and a plant cell right here. If we have salt, let's say, inside and out of our bloodstream, okay, inside our cells and outside our cells, um, if it's an equal amount, water is going to move into our cells and out of our cells at a normal rate. Um, and it's going to keep this blood cell normal. So the next type of solution that can affect molecule movement or transport um, is a hypertonic solution. So this word right here, hypertonic solution. 
So in this kind of solution, the solute, or remember the stuff, the sugar, the salt, the oxygen, whatever, outside of the cell is higher than inside the cell. Okay, so let's look at this picture down here. Okay, um, in this picture, there are more red molecules outside the cell than inside the cell. And so the water is going to go out of the cell. So a phrase to keep in mind um, that I always tell my students, and I think all the other teachers tell um, their students this as well, um, is that salt sucks. So what I mean by this is salt, an example of a solute, right, the stuff in the water, um, sucks, it absorbs, it draws water to itself. So wherever there is more salt, that's where the water is going to go. Or wherever there is more stuff, more solute, that's where the water is going to go. So if there's more solute outside of the cell in the solution, in the water, if you will, water is going to be drawn to it. So water is going to get sucked out of the cell. And so if you look in these pictures over here, what happens is the cell itself gets smaller. Um, it shrivels up. Okay, it shrivels up because it's losing water. Think of like a grape um, in the sun. If you leave a grape in the sun or out of water for too long, it turns into a raisin. A raisin is shriveled up and small, right? So um, a grape is losing its water um, and a, a raisin is the result. It shrivels up. So a cell um, in a hypertonic solution is going to shrivel because the water is going to move out of the cell as we said before. So, so far we talked about an isotonic solution, which was equal, and the water moved back and forth equally. We talked about a hypertonic solution, where water um, moved out of the cell because there was more solute on the outside. So, the last one we need to talk about is basically the opposite. It's a hypotonic solution. This is where the solute, or the stuff in the water, the stuff in the solution, outside of the cell is lower than inside the cell. Okay, so remember our little phrase that salt sucks, okay? And salt itself is just an example. It could be sugar, it could be um, any other molecule, right? Um, but this one is just kind of easy to remember, to be honest. Um, so salt sucks. So this means that there's more inside the cell than outside the cell, okay? So for example, if you look at this picture right here, okay, there are more, let's just pretend these red molecules right here, um, let's just pretend these guys right here are salt, okay? So you'll notice there's more salt inside of this cell than there is outside. So salt sucks. So the water molecules are going to go into the cell. Well, if you can think of a water balloon, if you keep filling it up and filling it up and filling it up with water, eventually that water balloon is going to pop. It's the exact same thing with cells. Eventually, if you keep putting water into a red blood cell, for example, if you keep absorbing this water, that cell is going to burst. And that bursting word, that what we call that is lysing. Um, lysing, lysed just means to have burst. Okay. Um, it's a little bit different with plant cells. Um, if you've ever seen a plant wilt or like get green or turn brown and like hunch over and it looks dead, um, when you put water on its roots, it begins to suck up the water again and becomes turgid, um, which means it just swells up. Um, and this is when a plant begins to stand up straight again. Um, and so hypotonic, opposite of hypertonic, the cell is actually going to expand and eventually burst if it continues to absorb the solution or the water. Okay, so we talked about um, several different things today. We talked about the concentration gradient. We talked about um, our different types of solution, hypo, hyper, and isotonic, and why things are moving across the cell membrane. So where in the world are we going with this? Well, this week we're going to talk about a couple different things, um, and into next week also we're going to talk about diffusion, um, osmosis, active and passive transport. So these are four ways that molecules move into and out of the cells um, more specifically, and they're all being because of the concentration gradient, um, and they're all because of the different types of solutions that we can find our cells and other living organisms' cells in. Um, so keep this in mind, um, this video in mind, as we go through this week and we talk about these four things. They're moving, the molecules are moving in these four situations because of the concentration gra gradients, um, 
and the and the types of solutions they find themselves in. Um, so remember, our question today, our essential question was why and how do molecules move across cell membranes? Um, review this um, this video to make sure you understand that.